We are Charles and Deborah, two workaholics who gave up our desert homestead for a retirement abroad in Panama. Join us for our adventure. Hey friends and family, welcome back. Just going to give a little video update because we've received some very good news and we've checked a lot of boxes and gotten a lot of very important things completed. First of all, let's talk about sad news. Lisa's time in Panama is coming to a close. Um, she came down for two months. We tried to do as much as humanly possible um, while still taking care of some legal and governmental things that we needed to take care of in order to secure the house, ensure we had the correct ID numbers, ensure we had our driver's licenses, and quite frankly, having her here was a blessing because on her tourist visa, she was able to drive, whereas our status as residents required us to get a license similar to how the Panamanians would get a license or through our U.S. Embassy. But everything takes appointments, and in the time of COVID, appointments are kind of iffy. And so we weren't sure if we were going to be able to get everything done before Lisa left. And so what I suspect is that, ah, oh, thank goodness, the universe in its wisdom has allowed us to get things done. So what happened? First of all, we got a call from our lawyer at Kramer & Kramer in Panama City that quite frankly, we had our appointment with the Tribunal Electoral, or the, I, I think I'm pronouncing that right, Tribunal Electorate, mm, probably did that wrong in both cases. But our lawyer at Kramer and Kramer alerted us that we had our appointment. And if we were there on Wednesday, that we would get our e cedula And that is basically the national ID number that identifies us as correct residents in Panama. And it's a great thing to have. It is a nationally recognized identification form and quite frankly, it affords us a few less hoops to jump through. So for this trip, we went to Panama City and we started out first having to get Finn groomed and get her to a border in Pedasi. Pedasi is a little community uh, about southwest of us, uh, south, more south than west, but it's a beautiful beach community with some great people, and there happens to be a pet boarding um, facility. It's run by a lady named Christina, and you can tell she loves animals, but more importantly, Finn loved her, and so the week Finn spent there was great. Shout out to Christina. That being the case, if we ever have to go somewhere, I think Pettacy Falls is going to be the first place I think of, and as long as she can take Finn, I'm going to feel very comfortable in any vacation we take. So, what else happened? Once we got Finn squared away, we drove to Panama City. Lisa had to do the whole drive by herself because her tourist visa allows her to drive, whereas our status does not, so she drove us to Panama City. Tuesday, we checked into the Wyndham at the Albrook Mall. For those of you that don't know, the Albrook Mall is the largest mall in Central America, or at least that's what it says online, and that's what they say. So, we're going to believe them. The Albrook Mall was large. It was fantastically large. It had a lot of stores that we really did need to hit. Charles found in Panama City a great fishing store called Abernathy's and he went there and found everything he needs to do deep sea fishing. So he was ecstatic and Lisa and I enjoyed just traipsing around the mall and seeing some of the sights. Tuesday we got up there and we just kind of hung out at the window. We ate at the restaurant. It was great. And Wednesday, we went ahead and met with our lawyer and at the tribunal, we received our cedulas. Getting it was very easy thanks to the previous immigration work on behalf of us by Kramer and Kramer Law Firm in Panama City. 
but they also helped us go ahead and finish out the process and get the identification number and it was super easy because of them because Charles nor I had our driver's licenses at the time and so Lisa was the only one of us that could drive because if you are a tourist you can drive for I think 90 days and so she was being our driver and when we rented cars she was the one that was able to do that and so she's been a huge blessing to us and as she gets ready to leave uh, it was probably getting a little stressful for her to drive everywhere Panama is sometimes like driving in New York City especially as you get into Panama City and so that that couldn't have been easy she is my sister from another mister and I love her so much for doing that for us we were hoping that our contact with zoo from zoo concierge would allow us the chance to get an appointment with Sertresen with the US Embassy with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, I think, and Sertresen to issue driver's licenses. That was super important. And quite frankly, ZOO, um, at ZOO Concierge Services, ZU, she is a ball of energy. More than that, she knows her stuff. She knows her way around Panama and she knows her way around that process. She was able to get us the embassy appointment. So Charles and I went to the U.S. Embassy. I have no footage of the embassy trip because you're not allowed to have cameras and so I just left everything at home. But we were able to get through the U.S. Embassy with no problem and they validated our driver's licenses. And next stop was the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, I think. I'm probably saying that wrong but I'll, I'll put a picture up so you can see where we were and uh, Zoo, Zoo got some good pictures at each of our stops, but she went in and worked on our behalf with all of our documentation, and so Panama validated what the embassy had given us. So we were off. Then she took us for our blood test, because if you're going to get a driver's license in Panama, you have to have a blood test. And so once we got our blood tests done and completed, we have the third piece of the puzzle. And then Zhu took us to Cetra Sin, which is um, the agency that will issue cards or, or identifications or things like driver's licenses. That didn't go so well. We had everything, even the receipt that proved we had been issued a cedula. But because we didn't have the card, the card was in the mail to us, they couldn't process us. So we came back from Panama City 99% of the way done and then we were driving through Las Tablas today to pick up Charles's card mine came yesterday we were driving through Las Tablas and Lisa said why don't we just stop by search for sin in Las Tablas and see since you now have everything because I was carrying all the paperwork with me and so I went in and I sat with a lady, Charles and Lisa went off and had, had drinks and lunch and just, you know, basically de-stressed. And I sat down with a very nice lady and quite frankly, she was a lovely soul. And it was fortunate we met her because she worked so hard on our behalf to get us the appointment that we needed. And I thought it would be for tomorrow or maybe even next week. And guess what? She got it today. So she basically worked not only to get us appointments in Las, Las Tablas, she worked to get us our licenses. So Charles and I walked out with our driver's licenses in Panama and it's just a huge step for us. And so in order to do this, it was not something we could have done without a lot of help. I've already given a shout out to Lisa. We could not have even done half this stuff if she weren't here um, helping us with the house and just kind of keeping things moving while we went out and did certain legal things that had to be done, um, driving us around, and then hopefully still having her own adventure and meeting people. And she met a lot of people and they love her. And so everybody's hoping she comes back. But by the same token, um, 
her ability to drive actually helped us tremendously our first two months here. And now that we have our licenses and can do everything, we can actually pick up the reins and move on. What is the other piece of news? We bought ourselves a car. So we not only have our licenses, but we have a mode of transportation. And that is thanks to Jessica Lynette. I think that is how you pronounce her last name. But she is also in the Petasi Post, which is the same place you can find Petasi Paul's The Border. And so basically you tell her your budget, you tell her the minimum requirements you want for your car, and she goes and finds it. And in some cases she's able to negotiate an even lower price. Her fee is very reasonable for this service and she's just very joyful. She and her husband are both lovely people and we enjoyed working with them. With that little bit of information, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. Mom, everything here is fine. We're doing fantastically. I'll give you a call soon, watch this channel, and you'll see some video updates and you'll get to see what we've been doing. And so friends and family, don't forget if you want to be notified, um, click like and subscribe and click the little notification bell and that way you'll know when we put a new video up. I try to put them up about once a week. Um, miss you all and hope you're being safe. I love you guys. Bye bye.